Hello, welcome back to the Villa View. It's happened again. Aston Villa have been in Birmingham C at Villa Park and it's time for a match review. So packed out Villa Park, two goals, second place, seven wins in a row. What did you think of the game, Dan? Great, great game. I'm still on, on cloud nine now. I don't think I've stopped smiling all day. To, to be fair, it's not often I'm smiling when I'm walking around work, let's, let's face it, but... <laughs> Just an un unbelievable day. I, I said in in the preview in the podcast, I was I wasn't really worried. And to be honest, other than Sam Gallagher hitting the post, I don't think there was any point in that game where I was worried. I just I just felt before the game that, that we'd do it, and and we put on the kind of display that I that I was looking for and and that I expected. So it's always nice to get one over your rivals, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that. But the big thing for me is that we finally find ourselves in control of our own destiny and that, that we're in that we've got that second place and now it's in our own hands and we, we're in control of our own destiny and hopefully we, we can stay there and get back to the Premier League well, yeah, all we've got to do now is, is match Derby's results isn't it and hopefully yeah. beat them at Villa Park and job done I mean you look back to December this this didn't seem <laughs> didn't seem possible the, the run in December was not was not good there was a few people calling for calling for Bruce out but he, he's answered them in the, in the best way possible and First of all, the fact that he was even there yesterday, like credit to him, he's, he yeah. he's, must be going through an absolutely horrible time at the moment. And you saw his reaction, I think it was to, to Horahan's goal when he nearly, nearly burst into tears. It's just a really emotional time for him. So credit to him for being there and credit to the lads as well, because I think there was a big element of that they were doing it for him yesterday. And they, they put on a real show and must have made him so, so proud. And hopefully Steve Bruce's dad was looking down from the skies, really proud of him and Villa as well. As we've said before, you you don't pass up that chance. Yeah, this squad isn't going to pass up the chance to, to get into that second place for the first time since we've been in the championship, isn't it, I think? This is the, the best mentality we've had amongst the players pr probably since the O'Neill days. Now, they're, they're so driven and you can see they just want to get that automatic place and they're determined to get it. And you could just see as well yesterday, they just wanted to make the fans happy. They wanted to give the fans... The, the bragging rights over, over Blues. And to be honest, I think we outclassed them. I think we played by far the, the better football. And other than that Gallagher chance, I don't remember us ever really being in trouble. Boga caused us a few problems at times in the in the first half. But I've spoke to Gabriel today and he, he even said himself that he went he went quiet in the second half and Blues did nothing in, in the second half. But we scored goals at, at important times. So I think we scored, Adoma scored on about... 60 minutes the atmosphere had just started to go a, a little bit flat the game was kind of petering out looked like it could go the way of last season at the start of the second half and then Adoma's goal just galvanised us and we were in control of the game but as you know when you one up you go into that last 10 minutes it can end up being horrible you can get stuff thrown at you the act that you have to deal with and you can find yourself under the cosh but Horahan's world again it came at a, a really good time and I think Connor himself would probably say that he, he wasn't having his, his best game out there, but as I've said before, even when these kind of players, the Hurrahans, the Grealishes, the Snodgrass, the Adomas, even when they're not playing well, they're capable of producing a, a bit of magic, and I think that's that's goal of the season right there, because the fact it was against Blues as well, it's just, it just it's surely going to win goal of the season unless someone does something really special between now and May. Uh, unbelievable technique as well, wasn't it? The, the lovely dip and the keepers, you could see him scrambling, couldn't he, straight away, uh, yeah. he had no chance with that. It was sh shades of Hitzelsberg, you just knew as soon as, it, as, soon as he hit it, yeah. He, he was going in, he caught it perfectly, it sat up really nicely for him and he's he's the kind of player kind of that will take will take a chance, he'll he'll have a shot and, and he got rewarded for it. So in fan cams you're asking people about the battle that, that Villa displayed today and that, you know, we'll always have better players than, than Birmingham. We've got you know, we've got the better squad, there's no doubt about that. We've got more money, we've the you know, the playing squad's much better than theirs. But when Birmingham come to Villa Park they'll always put up a fight, they'll always show heart and determination whereas it didn't seem that they were. I don't know. The players didn't seem up for it. I didn't think, and, and even the fans. Compared to last year, they were, you know, given as good as they got. And this year, it seems a little bit subdued. Like they almost knew that they were that far behind us. Even after like the first five or ten minutes, you were looking at it and going, "We're too good for for this team. We we should go on to win today." That's what that's what I thought anyway. I mean, the teams are on different levels. If you look at the money we've spent since we've been in the championship, although we've not spent much this summer, you'd expect our team to be better than theirs. But actually, saying that, they spent a lot of money this summer but it seems like they've they've wasted it because that one thing you can say about Blues is that usually in those games they will put themselves about and they are up to up to the fight but we, we matched them 
in the battle. I mean, I, th I called before the game that I thought Jednak should and would play. I think he made, made a massive difference yeah. in the battle. It was very harsh on, on Bjarnason. But then, as, as I said, you need different players for, for different games. And if we go on to sat looking at Saturday, Fulham now, I'd put Bjarnason back in because they're a more energetic side and I think we'll need more energy and I think he'll get around the pitch better. But Jednak was, was an absolute monster. I mean, they had their big lump end in the middle of the park, <laughs> but the, the guy wasn't a footballer. He didn't look like a footballer. It looked like an NBA player had just been chucked in the middle, in the middle of the game and asked, asked to play. He couldn't, he couldn't handle Grealish. I mean, one of his challenges on Grealish, I, I think it was probably oh. accidental, but it was pretty bad. It was bad. It was pretty bad. Lucky not to have hurt him hurt him more and then he goes he goes to get sent off in, at the end la lashing out but on to the Blues the Blues fans as you say I think it was a bit like I know we didn't beat them 5-1 we didn't smash them by any means but they just knew I think they knew that we were, be we were better than them and that, that they had a very small chance of winning that game if we were on song yeah. and, our good, and our good players thankfully for us were on song but one thing I, d I, d I did like about the Birmingham fans actually at the end was that Despite the game, they weren't very good. The players went over at the end to applaud them, and actually they, they, they applauded them back. There was no booing or anything like that. So I've, I've got a lot of time for that, personally. I like, I like that kind of thing, supporting the players, no matter what. But we're in a different, a different stratosphere, I think, in this league compared to them. I mean, I, can't, I've got, I might be making this up, but I'm sure when they signed someone, they were talking about finishing ahead of Villa, joining the biggest team yeah. in the Midlands. I think it might have been Harley, Harley Dean. He's having a laugh, isn't he? he does, he's, he's just they trying to get the fans on side, and then they're just being completely delusional. Yeah, they're, didn't their chairman say something as well? They oh yeah, like that. he said we can still finish above above Villa, their chief, their chief exec. But again, yeah, what, pla what planet's the guy on? No, that's one of those things, isn't it? When someone comes in, it's like right, how to, how to uh, tick the boxes for Birmingham fans? Well, if we throw in a dig at Villa, we'll we'll get on all right. Yeah, it's stupid. It's what Pulis did when he was at West Brom. Yeah. I mean, the clever the clever fans cotton on to it but there are, there will always be an element and it would, maybe it would be the same with us as well there will always be an element that will buy it but if I was a Birmingham fan God forbid um, <laughs> your parents didn't hate you enough <laughs> if I was a Birmingham fan I'd be coming away from Villa Park yesterday thinking oh, Villa better team they deserve to win but I'd be very disappointed with the effort that the players seemed to put in that they didn't show any fight but if you turn up to a derby game at Villa Park they're scrambling around the bottom as well they need the points any which way they can get the least you, do, you expect from them to is to show a bit of heart and a bit of passion. They didn't even, they just didn't look at it at any point. They didn't seem, it didn't look like a derby game. If you took away the names of Aston Villa and Birmingham and the kits and the fans and the atmosphere, it just seemed like another game for us to be, we're playing against a team near the bottom and we're expected to do the job and win and that's what we did. But from the Birmingham fans' point of view, I'd be, I'd be really disappointed with, with the showing they saw yesterday. I don't think it's a, a lack of effort. I don't think their players have gone out there and and not tried and, and not put it in. I just think it's simply that they, they didn't know how to contain us. Yeah. For example, for example, Grealish, the only way they could deal with him was to, was to kick him. I and mean, I think he's the most foul player in the championship and he's only been playing since December. <laughs> so that tells you everything you need to know about how good how good he is. And, and he did absolutely run it yesterday. They, mu they must hate the fact that we've got lo local lads that can just cause them problems. Obviously, they've had their issues with Gabby over the years and now they've got they've got Grealish who hopefully he's going to come in and I know he didn't quite make his dreams come true he, he didn't get that goal but he must be he must be so proud of himself yesterday it must be a dream come true to just run blues ragged because I know I know if I got to do I mean it's, ne it's never going to happen I'm not running anyone ragged but <laughs> if, if I was to do that and play against blues I'd be absolutely delighted with myself and he's as big a Villa fan as I am and he and he will be delighted with himself without wanting to sound like this is the Jack Grealish show obviously you just mentioned that he ran the game you could probably pick any clip of us talking over him over the last few weeks to describe what he was playing like yesterday but talk me through it quickly because we've, we've spoke about him so much over the last few weeks I know but it's, it's good I mean previously last season we were speaking about players week in week out because they were bad yeah. Now, now we're getting to getting to speak about players because they're on they're playing on top of their game. I mean, someone put something about player of the year awards going to be really really hard to pick, and we're saying that Grealish might end up being a contender even though he's missed yeah. the first first chunk of the season. But it's not, we haven't been able to have a player of the year ceremony for the last <laughs> three or four years because we've just been stinker. So we have we haven't been able to do it. The, the fact that we've now got maybe four or five people that would be up for that award as as it stands shows you how far we've come and. Uh, I can't describe Grealish anymore. I can't say anything that I haven't already said. But it's that feeling of proudness because you know it means a lot to him, and he is—he is a Villa fan. He's a massive, massive Villa fan, as big as any of us that sit in the crowd every week. And he's just living his 
and and our dreams. I mean, when you used to when I used to watch Ian Taylor again, I feel like I mention him every week. Now <laughs> as well, when I watch when I watched Ian Taylor, I used to like love watching him because I knew how much it meant for him, and I get that same enjoyment when I, when I watch Grealish. Yeah, it's almost a little bit like you feel like he's your mate sort sort of thing. That you know he's one of he's one of the lads that he's the Villa fan. He's representing you on the pitch sort of thing, and that yeah, and anything, that's what anything he does, you think. Yeah, you sort of feel proud, like a family member's done something good. I mean, my dad doesn't sing along with many songs. He does sing along with songs, but he usually doesn't wax lyrical about too too many players. But he 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 was singing the Jack song yesterday, and I could see yeah. that he he felt the same, and he was proud. And that and that's a that's a pensioner who's watched a lot of <laughs> who's watched a lot of a lot of Villa players. So if he he's proud of you. You're doing something right. So I've seen a couple of murmurings on Twitter over the last sort of week or so that Conor Horahan maybe could be doing a little bit more with his game, and he's maybe not contributing. A, a, a great deal obviously this was before the Blues game obviously scores a worldie on Sunday uh, what, what have you made of Horahan over the last few weeks? I think he's been the same as all of the, all of the other attacking midfielders I think, he, I think he puts it in he works extremely hard and I think he's a key component in that midfield even when he's not at his best and as I said he'll probably say himself he wasn't at his best yesterday sometimes you have games like that but you can still still make a difference I think it's been a I mean I've not watched the TV TV back yet but I think for that first goal, it's overlooked the impact he actually had for that first goal because he he blocked off the defender and just slowed him down a touch that meant he yeah. couldn't get to a domer as quickly as he wanted to, which gave a domer the space to knock it in off, off the post. So I think he's making contributions, and that's what I'm saying. People don't have to play their absolute best every week. It's it's never going to happen at some stage. Grealish's form is going to not be a, as potent. As it, as it is right now but you can still make contributions like Snodgrass against Sheffield United the other week yeah. he wasn't really involved that much going forward but then he pops up with a, with a worldie in the last minute and he's won us the game it's the same with Horahan he's made that game comfortable to be fair to him if he doesn't if he doesn't score people will say people might say he's, he's not getting assists people might say he's not contributing but that, is, that isn't true he does so much unseen work he gets around that pitch he's, whenever there's closing down to be done he's one of the first ones yeah. to be there and I just think the way that formation works with him playing on the right of the centre and Grealish on the left of the centre because I think they're both playing as orthodox central midfielders with a licence to get forward I just think the whole the whole combination of the midfield just works perfectly and I don't see why you would want to change any of those four at the moment Yeah those that combination of those players we've talked about it a few times now that sort of front four five or six or whatever it is you sure with that first goal that uh, Grealish has drifted out towards the left from centre mid, so that's allowed Adoma to come into the centre. Horahan's made the run forward, pulled out the defender. Adoma's got some space and he slots it bottom corner. Without that movement and that freedom to sort of change around, if, if you're very rigid, that goal doesn't happen. Obviously, exactly. a bit of individual brilliance that that second goal was. That's just it fell to him, nice technique, and it goes in. That's you know, that can happen. In, obviously, it doesn't happen in any game, but that can happen in any formation sort of thing. Yeah, only, yeah, the first goal and the goal that we saw against um, Burton, the one when Snodgrass put the ball through. Yeah, those goals only sort of happen when you're playing like we're playing now with freedom and without the shackles on and that, with that desire to go forward. If you don't have that, you know you're very rigid and you go long ball and things like that. It's a different Villa that we've seen on this on this run, and yeah. long may it continue. And that's where the anchor man's so important because yeah. whoever's playing there, it gives those players, those midfield players, the license to do what they do best, and that is. Attack. I mean, I've said Villa are on a different stratosphere to, to Birmingham earlier on, and I'm about to talk about Man City, who are definitely on a different stratosphere <laughs> to us. But the way they play, they have Fernandinho as the designated a- anchor man. Yeah. And then De Bruyne and David Silva play as central midfielders. I and mean, we've kind of co- copied that. But it's going forward, it just, it's just a joy to watch. And I think we're a joy to watch at the moment when we're, when we're on song and coming forward. And Man City are definitely a joy to watch. But Horahan and um, Grealish are, are kind of playing the similar role. I'm not saying they're playing to the same standard, or they're the same kind of players. But they're playing similar roles to Silva and De Bruyne. And it's paying, it's paying off, I think. And as I say, I don't know why you would want to change it. We talked a lot about John Terry at the start of the season and the impact he'd have. And you saw him at the end of the game, he's running around... You know, fist bump into the hole, and like he's just won the title with Chelsea or whatever. Like he, a lot of people were sort of judgmental to the to the point of, oh, will he play for us every game? You know, is he is his heart in it? Is he just here for the money and all those sort of things? No and then you, you look at the way he's played. I think he's the games he's been available for. He's played the ninety minutes in every one or, or something near to that anyway. And you you just look at him and you think that he's changed the whole 
mentality of the club. Obviously, you're not going to put something like down something like that down to one player, but no. his, his influence will be massive on the players that we've got and his desire. You can imagine, can't you, in the dressing room beforehand, you know, grounding people and letting them know how big th- this game was and how important this run we're on is, and you know, the, the running in the championship. He, he's been probably our signing of the season in terms of what he's brought to the club as a whole. I think. Ah, oh, he's. What what a leader! What a character! I heard Chelsea. I saw some Chelsea fans on Twitter today, saying how much how much they they miss him. Saying when has when have any of our players come and applauded the fans like John Terry did at the Villa game yeah. on Sunday? And the other players they look up to him. Anything he says, they'll run through brick walls for him because they yeah. all they've all got so much respect for him. He, he's absolutely galvanised us, and he has been better than I ever anticipated he would be. People were worried worried about he hadn't played for a year and he, he probably was a, a touch shaky when, when at the start of the season but they all were there was, a, there were, there was a, a slight nervousness amongst the lads that's not there now there's just yeah. a real winning mentality and they're, they're a great we've got a great team now at, the, at this level and a team of winners with ability and attitude and, that, and that's what Villa haven't had the last few years I thought Hogan played well as well just could be yeah. talking about I thought he didn't score he didn't really have many chances but he ran his socks off and he set, he set the tone Scott Hogan on, on Sunday he really reminded me of Craig Bellamy I just thought he was a pest I always liked Bellamy he's always the one one of those players that you'd want on your team I mean Hogan was even putting a, put a good slide tackle <laughs> in the first half which I don't think I've seen him do in a Villa shirt yeah I really thought he was he was pivotal yesterday and he set the tone ran himself into the ground and I'm glad, just glad to see him doing well because he deserves it so great day at Villa Park you know another win Derby Day win but you got to come away feeling a little bit disappointed, haven't you, that, that we've not won the accents and are you from Birmingham trophy? It's just, it's just disappointing, isn't it? At the end of the day. I mean, the, the Blues fans that one they've taken the time to what, watch the Villa video, which we thank them for that. I, I don't really get. I mean, to be fair, the views have been excellent <laughs> on the fan cams, but if we'd have just lost to Blues, I would not be going on Dave <laughs> to, to see what the Blues fans <laughs> had to say. Absolutely. No chance, but to say there was no Birmingham accent, I mean, I'm not being funny. I've lived in London for the last 10 years, but I'm pretty sure I've got a, a strong <laughs> br- Brummy accent, for, a, a strong, as strong as they come. So I find that absolutely bizarre, but that is absolutely clutching <laughs> at, at straws. I mean, you've just lost 2-0, and you're coming on and saying, well, we won, we won, the, we won the people from Birmingham Cup, so that's... <laughs> That's the main thing. If that if that's all you've got, it's a sorry state of affairs. I mean, I spoke to, I said I spoke to Gabriel earlier. He did, and he's a reason. He, I'm not saying all Blues fans are unreasonable. Yeah. Not at all. Gabriel he said we deserve to win, and he and he he said he did not get where people are coming from with that. And he he's a Blues fan. He's a staunch Blues fan. So for him to be saying that that is just bizarre makes me think what what are these people on? <laughs> the thing that I liked as well was people there was tweets like oh I didn't see any Villa fans in, in town because they've all got to go off to Lichfield and Tamworth or whatever and then there's literally like a Lichfield blue oh, flag in your way and it's like what? <laughs> I wanted to reply to one of them I didn't I didn't get around to do any one to say I didn't see any I didn't see many Blues fans in the away end by the end of the game like, they, had, they had the time to get back to town they'd have been, they'd have been straight on the early train because it was the place was emptying out that end was know, emptying yeah. out where they were it's just ridiculous isn't it if you come away from like you say if you come out of Derby Day and all you can throw at us is that you're going off to Gloucester and Tamworth or whatever then throw it at us mate global club global global well, club well yeah exactly if you're a bigger club you're bringing fans from all over the area doesn't it just because you don't have the accent doesn't mean that you're any less of a supporter than somebody who lives in Australia or you know lived in Birmingham and moved away or whatever like, it's just pathetic isn't it I can't, I can't shake mine I feel it's it's holding me back from proper presenting work. <laughs> it's firming up, so I, can't, I wish I didn't have one. So that's it for our match review. I'm sure every Villa fan will enjoy hearing us talk about a win against our local rivals. If you have enjoyed it, then give the video a like. We thank you all for, for your support for the fan cams video. It's got some really tremendous views already. And if you haven't seen that, then make sure you check out Ad, Adam Wright's, uh, it's, not, it's not really a rant, Adam Wright's impassioned plea at the end, because I think everything that he said is absolutely spot on and I thought so at the time as well so Rollinson roll that veto Aston Villa will always have more footballing ability than what small Heath have got but what I always worry about in the build up to these do we have enough passion and determination and between 2002 2005 2006 whatever, Birmingham had more of it and ever since then I've always worried but I've never worried all week 
all, all, all week, all week, I've not worried about this match at all because we've got passion, commitment in bucket loads, and I love this. So happy right now. I just want to give a massive thank you to. Dr. Tony. Dr. Tony. Keith Wyness. Steve. Steve Rounds. Brian. A little because you put the heart and soul back into this football club. And I'll always be grateful for that. Fantastic. And just just a word for the extra 8,000 supporters that are here this week. Come back next week. Come back next week. Because this is a football club now we can be very, very proud of. So don't just come for the Blues. Come next week. Because we've got it back now. Aston Villa is back. Absolutely love that. Comment below with your thoughts on this video and the game in general. Are Villa going to hold on to second now? Destiny finally in our own hands. I believe we've just got over 10k, not, not been confirmed yet, but I think we have hit 10k, so thanks very much for that. And if you're not one of those 10k, if you could subscribe with your post notifications on, that helps the channel grow and will potentially open some doors for us, which we'd all really, really like. Thanks for all your support. Great day yesterday, still smiling. Keep supporting the boys, keep behind them. Let's get this second place secure and get back to where we belong in the Premier League. Up the villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.